some guitar and open G. Well, I got a few things to get you started. I'm no expert, but I've been playing an open G a long time and obviously it's a, it's a Stones kind of thing and it's a swampy kind of thing and it's a bluesy and a country and all this other stuff. So anyway, I'm just gonna show you a few things to get started if you've never played an open G and if you're curious about it or whatever. So I'm just scratching the surface. There's an, and this is just an endless, near endless part of your guitar journey if you are so inclined. And uh, once again, I'm not an expert. There's probably a lot of people who know a lot more about this than I do, but I have a lot of fun with it. And uh, so why play an open G? Well, it sounds awesome for starters. I mean, it's got that stones kind of crunch to it, but you know, you can also play country and blues with it. Uh, you know, a lot of bands have used open G over the years and um, it's pretty easy actually. And that's one thing I like about it. I think Keith Richards said uh, five strings, three notes, two fingers and one asshole and that's all it takes. It's a great composition tool. If you're stuck in a rut with how you're playing, tune your guitar to open G and you'll discover a whole new way of playing things that uh, will really open your ears to uh, a lot of possibilities. And, um, you know, if you're in a jam situation, I play a lot with two other guitar players, plus a bassist and all that. And, um, you know, if they're in standard tuning, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll get out my uh, open G machine and, and kind of lay in some things that way. It's a great different tonal texture. Uh, certainly if you're making recordings and things like that, uh, it's another, another good way to overdub some different types of sounds if you've got your guitars in, in, a, in an open G or even any other open tuning. Hopefully this might be a gateway to you look into like uh, an open E or open D or whatever. So the tuning is really, it's pretty simple. You uh, tune your uh, high E down to a D and then you keep the B a B and you keep the G a G and you keep the D a, a D. That stuff doesn't change. And then uh, once you get to your A string, you tune, tune that down to a, uh, to a G. And then if you still have your low E on there, you tune that down to a D. Some people will keep their low D, their, the low D on, which I have over the years, and you can get some great, great sounds out of that. But right now I've just got the five string open G going. And uh, that's kind of how it sounds. That should be a, that should be a G chord close enough for rock and roll, uh, so strum, so uh, just ring that wide open, that's a G, and then you're, you're on the second fret, you've got an A, whole step down, you've got a B, next step is your C, there's a D, there's a E, there's an F, and then you're back to the G, A, E, etc. So hopefully you got that. But really it's, it, and you're really just playing, uh, you know, this, whatever bar chord shape that is, you're just kind of playing that with, with just by barring your, your uh, index finger across the whole, the whole fretboard. There's your A. All right, so I thought I would give you a closer look at uh, where the chords fall on the neck for, um, in the open G. And so here we go. Just, that's a G. Second fret is an A. There's your B, C, D, E, F. The G repeats itself right there. There's the A, B. and so on and so forth. And then to get different sounds. Then you've just, you're just putting your pinky or your uh, middle finger on the B and then I'm stretching over a whole step with my ring finger and laying that down on the, I guess that would be the uh, D string. You can play that, that uh, I think it's called a suspended chord, and you can play that too as part of the G. Okay. And 
that's that's really I mean shit that's really about it and uh, you know your your middle strings are still in standard tuning so you can play you can play your leads in there without, without much issue um, certainly you can play slide with that pretty easily and if you lay a, you put your capo down you can do some things also I guess uh, Keith will do a lot of He'll put the key capo on the B position for a lot of songs. Um, I've never really explored that a whole lot. And, uh, and if you want to play minors, that's kind of tricky. But that minor shape that where you play your A minor, that still works up and down the neck because you haven't, you haven't changed those strings. So you just got to use a little finesse. A lot of times if I'm playing with other people, I'll just play one note in that. Um, in that minor and that'll work out pretty well uh, if the whole tune's in minor then that might be that might be a thing and uh, I think that's about it on that and um, something else to keep in mind is a uh, and I'm, I'm going to show you something with the capo a little later and uh, because it's out of my reach right now and uh, but anyway uh, if you got a banjo laying around the house you might already know a banjo is tuned to open G, so you can play a lot of stone songs on the banjo. So that kind of breaks the ice of parties, doesn't it? You play uh, Gimme Shelter or something on a banjo. Um, and if you tune your your uh, high, high D, if you tune it back up to a high E, then that is what is known as a Chicago tuning. And, that, and I'll show you a little bit about that in, in, at the end of this. And, and how that works and what the advantage to that might be. So anyway, that's really, that's about all you need to know about an open G and uh, hopefully I've helped you uh, get down the path to explore. It's a great way to play and uh, super easy. So I put the capo on the fifth position, uh, fifth fret C position. did was I, I tuned the, um, the high D back to a high E so that is standard tuning and that just gives you another total option so this would be like you know a part of an A part of a, uh, a G chord um, part of that major chord and so you can play um, you can play kind of almost a hybrid tuning between a standard and an open G and um, and it sounds pretty good <laughs> reach, you know, like that's a C and I'm reaching with my pinky uh, up three frets to the to the root on that C. So that makes that chord a little bigger.
So I thought I'd give you a closer look at the Chicago tuning and uh, kind of what you do with that. And uh, it's pretty easy, yeah, but you can rock out with it pretty good. Thanks for watching and I hope you got something out of this. Later.